Hello, welcome to the fourth episode of the LLM mini series. Today, we're going to look into querying SQL databases with natural language with the help of the LangChain library. We all know that a typical place to store data are SQL databases. To get information out of an SQL database, you use SQL. A lot of people who need to use such information are not familiar with SQL and it is not necessary for everyone to be, as you can build UIs, for example, to get specific information out of the database. With LLMs and Generative AI, there is a new, very practical and flexible way to interact with databases to get necessary information. You can use natural language as if you ask your colleague for the information in the chat. As already mentioned, we use the library LangChain for the implementation of our little project because LangChain already offers nice wrappers for querying databases, so you can very quickly implement such a functionality. We also created a user interface to ask our questions. It's a Gradio UI that was built in a hugging face space. I will show you in a minute. First of all, I want to show you the data we work with. It's the Chinook database, a freely available database which represents a digital media store. It contains several tables, as you see here. And the tables we're going to use in our examples are the customer table. It lists all the customers of the store together with their details. Then we will use the employee table, which lists the eight employees of the store and their details. And then also the invoice table, which lists the invoices of their store, of the store with uh, several details. Let's switch to the UI. Um, so we implemented two approaches to interact with the database the SQL database chain approach and an agent-based approach. Both are offered in a LangChain library, therefore it is not much implementation work on your side and really easy to use. I will talk about the two approaches a bit more while I show them to you. And by the way, as a model in the background, we use the text DaVinci 3 model from the GPT 3.5 model family. Okay, let's try some examples. We start with a simple request and with the SQL database chain approach. We will ask how many employee, um, employees there are. Okay, here's the result. You see, first of all, the your question, your initial question. Then you see the SQL query that was generated. You see the result of the query. And then you get the result in a natural language way. There are eight employees. Also see um, is that there it creates the SQL query and executes it at the same time without further explanation or steps of how it got to the result. Um, you can also use this approach for a bit more complex requests. Let's try out this one. List the total sales per country, which country's customers spend the most. And you see here, um, it's the same. It looks the same like the first request. You get your request first, then you see the generated SQL query. You get the result of the, the list of the total sales per country, and then you get a natural language answer of which country, um, which country's customers spend the most. Now let's have a look at the agent-based approach. Um, let's try out the first of the two examples. You will see that it takes a bit longer to process. And what you also see is that the answer is quite long compared to the, the other approach. Um, let me first talk about the idea and the advantages of the agent-based approach. Um, so it can answer questions based on the database schema and also on the database content. Also, it can, can correct its own errors during the process of answering a query. So all in all, it is a more sophisticated and reliable approach compared to the chain approach. And it adds an explainability or interpretability layer as it outputs its way of thinking through, so to say, the query and getting to the result. 
And this is actually called a React style prompting. So let's check out the, the output. Um, so you see actions, observations, and thoughts. And first of all, um, it uh, gets the whole, uh, all the tables that are available um, and um, thinks about which table is the most relevant one for this, um, for this query. Uh, it's the employee table, and then it goes through the schema of the table here. It also looks at the contents of the table. It then goes back to the initial question, um, how many employees are there, and reasons that uh, the answer for this is in the employee table. Um, it generates the, the query. Um, the then it um, outputs an observation, which is the result of the query. And um, the next thought is, okay, I have the final answer and it outputs it in la natural language. There are eight employees. And the same uh, happens for the more complex query. There will also, oh, there will also be a quite long output and it takes more time process. Okay, you see here, quite long output. Um, again, actions, observations, and thoughts. Here in the beginning, it finds out, okay, um, for this request, two tables are relevant, the invoice and the customer table. It looks at the two schemas, first as the, at the customer one, then at the invoice um, table, and it also looks at the contents of the um, of the tables and um, then it generates um, the query, puts out the or observes the, um, the total sales per country um, and puts out the final answer um, that the US customers spent the most money. Um, finally, I want to go quickly to the code with you. Um, so, actually, um, this is all the code you really need uh, from here on. It's the it's the Gradio app. Um, for the chain approach, you need this line, and for the agent approach, you need these lines. And what I want to show you now is um, the internal um, prompt that is combined with the user prompt to get to the answer. Um, you find the prompt here. So this is the internal Langchain prompt that Langchain uses to translate the natural language queries by the user into SQL. 